Sure, of course. So, can you tell us a bit about yourself? About myself? Wow. Where do you want me to start? You can start with your name. Okay. My name is Professor Muhammadu Ka. I was born in the Gambia. Uh, I grew up in the United States educated in the United States, did my bachelor's, master's, and PhD at Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, also did a master's of science in financial engineering at the George Washington University. Um, at Stevens, I studied information systems and computing and management science. Um, that's my educational background in the United States, but I did my high school in the Gambia. I've also studied in Saudi Arabia briefly at King Saud University in Riyadh, where I did a diploma in Arabic language. So I speak Arabic a little bit. Then I moved to the US to study for higher education. After my PhD, uh, for me, learning is a continuous process. Learning never ends. You always have to continue to improve yourself so that you can sharpen your skills to solve challenges and to help others. In that pursuit, I went back to school after my PhD and went to Oxford University, did a postgraduate degree on strategy and innovation. I also went back to school at Cambridge and did an advanced leadership program. Uh, I did some programs at Harvard, etc., etc. So as you can see, learning doesn't stop just when you get a degree. If you want to be useful to society and what is entrusted in you, you can never be satisfied with what you know. There's always more to know. And the more you seek knowledge, the more you realize how little you know and how much more. And when you do that, you learn from others that are also learning with you. I believe in that. Um, in terms of uh, work, I've worked in many institutions, from corporate to academic, but mostly academic. I taught at Howard University in the United States. I taught at uh, Rutgers University in the United States as a professor. I taught at George Washington University. I've taught at American University that brought me to Yola. I've also taught in the Middle East. I've taught at the American University of Sharjah and was the head of Department of Information Systems while I was on sabbatical from Rutgers. I went there for a sabbatical is you are given time to go to another institution. I did that for one semester. They invited me back to head the information systems department in the business school. I took a leave of absence from Rutgers to do that. Okay? Um, so generally, uh, that's some of the uh, work experience. I've worked at at and Bell Labs. Uh, I've worked at the Education Testing Service in Princeton. And uh, my first job in Africa is in Nigeria and in Yola. So I was among the core team 
that started the academic engagement at the American University of Nigeria. At the time, it was called APTI, American University of Nigeria. This building that you are in here today was not here when I came here in 2005. So I was among the core team of leadership that were recruited by American University in Washington and sent to AUN to execute the vision and mission of the founder of this university, Elijah Atiku Abubakar. My assignment then was to be the founding dean of the School of IT and Communications. That's what it was called then. So I established the School of IT and Communications in Yola at the American University. I started the first degree programs there in information systems, computer science, communications and digital media. The first software engineering undergraduate program possibly in Nigeria and maybe one of the few in Africa then. Um, I did that for four years. Within that four years, I've also at some point was asked by the president to be uh, also at the same time the interim dean of the business school while we get a replacement and I was still the dean of SITC. At some point I was also asked to be the CIO, the interim C CIO of the university and worked with many colleagues here to establish the technical infrastructure of IT in this university. Um, as a dean, I worked with the faculty to secure the first NUC accreditation of AUN to accreditate all the degree programs in SITC and the business school. So I was here till we graduated the first batch of students. Then I left AUN and went to the Gambia as the second African country that I have worked after Nigeria. So Nigeria is very dear to my heart. It was because of my journey to Nigeria and what I contributed at AUN that I was recognized by the Gambia and to go and serve as the first Gambian vice chancellor of the University of the Gambia in May 2009. I did that for six years, but immediately after I left AUN, I was honored by the founder of the university and the board and was invited to serve as a member of the board of trustees of AUN. So although I finished, I left my, my tenure to the Gambia as a vice chancellor, I never left Yola, I never left AUN. I kept on contributing and engaging into the activities of the university all the time. When I finished my term in the Gambia for six years, I decided to move on. I went back to the U.S. momentarily but was invited by the government of Azerbaijan in Baku to serve as a vice rector for technology and innovation, as well as the founding dean of a school of IT and engineering, and was a professor of IT and communications there. I still continued to serve at AUN's board. I did that for three years in Baku at the ADA University, it's called. I established the School of IT and Engineering. I set up a center for big data and data science research there in collaborations with my colleagues there, funded by BP and the government of Azerbaijan as a center of excellence. 
then I was invited back to Yola to step down from uh, the board and now come, ba come back and be part of the university leadership. I came back as provost and vice president of academic affairs, which in the Nigerian system is called De deputy vice chancellor. So when you hear vice president for academic affairs and provost, what it really means is deputy vice chancellor of the university. I'm responsible for the academic affairs of the university and I have many units that report to me. Uh, other things I have done, I serve on various boards. I'm the chairman of Zenit Bank, the Gambia. Zenit Bank have a subsidiary in the Gambia. I'm the founding chairman of the board, and I led the activities of the board on behalf of Zenit Bank PLC Nigeria. I was also a fellow at Cambridge. I was a student, but I was appointed to be a fellow, and I taught a module on advanced leadership at the George Business School at Cambridge. So I can keep on going on, but I think that gives you a geography of uh, who I am. I am a Fulani. I don't speak Fulani, unfortunately, which is one of my goals and desire. I'm not sure whether I will ever achieve that. But it's interesting for me that I happen to find myself in Yola, where there is a lot of full, full day, which excites me, and I'm very proud of that. You have a very nice personality. Thank you. What are your responsibilities as the vice president of of AUN as Vice President of Academic Affairs. Uh, my responsibilities are wide and deep, mainly the Chief Academic Officer of the University. I support our President and serve as her Chief Academic Officer, where all educational policies and academic programs are the responsibilities of this office. We also have all the offices that report to this office, such as the university registrar, which is critical. All the schools of the university, all the deans report to this office, I provide leadership for them. We are also responsible to ensure that there is quality learning, engagement and achievement of learning outcomes so that our students will graduate to be amongst the best. We provide leadership to ensure that the vision and mission and values of the university are translated into what happens in the academic enterprise of the university. We have a graduate school, which has a dean that offers masters and PhD programs. We make sure that our curriculum is competitive, is rigorous, is practical and prepares our students for the future to serve this nation and beyond with competence and quality. We also ensure that this university is anchored on a liberal arts philosophy and to make sure that we are always in compliance to ensure that all our programs are established and delivered more than expected 
by the NUC. We also ensure this office that our students, our degree programs are well taught out and delivered in a very learning engagement where the student is center and participates in their own learning. And we provide the requisite support for the students so that when they graduate, they can compete with anybody anywhere, regardless of where they've graduated from. So in a nutshell, it provides the academic leadership is the heartbeat of the university. Most of the officers reports here. We make sure that there is integrity, there is, uh, uh, that the students are prepared through our academic intervention to be entrepreneurial, to be innovative, to be critical thinkers, to be problem solvers, and to be excited in learning and be confident wherever they are. So we value entrepreneurship, we value development, we value innovativeness, and we make sure that they are equipped with technical competencies regardless of their majors. So as you can see, there is a whole lot um, this office do. And we collaborate with other functions and vice presidents across um, the campus to make sure that AUN delivers quality education and learning engagement that addresses the needs of our society. How do you think ICT can make learning easier, more effective, and interesting, especially in the northern Nigeria? Um, ICT today, it's more important than ever once it is brought in to the youths and to the children through digital platforms and services of learning because the students will be able to engage and access learning content in simpler and in many forms and engage in accessing it and learning it in a very practical way at any time they want. So ICTs uh, are critical. The teacher um, is never going to be replaced by ICTs, but the role of the teacher and the role of the students will be augmented. For example, in northern Nigeria, ICT now can provide access to learning materials and resources that are from the best of the best sitting right here in Yola, accessing, let's say, calculus that is taught by the best professor or the best teacher who lives in Boston with the same content, the same lectures, the same material, like the students from Boston, for example. So it provides an opportunity of access to quality learning in a way that the students or the youth from the North is will be able to get the best instructions for them in addition to what their teachers are giving them. There is, uh, you will be able to get access to learning materials beyond textbooks. So um, how ICTs can be, what's the question again? 
Okay, it will make learning more easier because you can actually get access to the course material at any time you want. You can replay it, you can repeat it, you can rewind it, right? If you don't understand it, you can go back to it, right? Now you can also have access to other people online engaging to help you on things that you could not understand from your teacher or from yourself. You are just a keyboard away from her and say, I'm solving this problem. Here is what I have done and I am stuck. You don't have to wait till the following day to go to your teacher. When you post it, all the other classmates can work with you. So you can be a participant in your own learning. So it is very critical and essential that uh, uh, learners in the Northeast and in Yola in particular, or in Adamawa, be provided with access to digital learning platforms and services for every subject matter. The good news is these things are increasingly available and accessible to all students across the world and you don't have to pay a Kobo or a Naira for it. All of you studying in um, Amadou, Ribadu College and you said you want to be a software engineer. Obviously mathematics is very important, uh, chemistry is very important, physics is very important, your science subjects are very important. Your competency and your skills in them are critical. If these subjects are not taught to you uh, in a very fun way, in a very easy way, to equip you with the capability and the competence, it will be very difficult for you by the time you come to college or to the university to be as good. If you don't have the competent and quality teacher, it makes it a bit more difficult. But today you can go online. You're familiar with Khan Academy? Yes? If, you don't, if you're not familiar with Khan Academy, you can go to http colon front slash front slash www.khanacademy.org. All the subjects that you are taking in high school, anybody in the Northeast, if they have internet connectivity, on their, tele on their phones, they can access Khan Academy and, take a, and click on a biology O-levels course or A-level course. You will find the best biology teacher you can find anywhere in the world. You click and it's as if he or you are in his or her classroom. And all the chapters, he or she will be delivering lectures like I'm talking to you. You can see the transcription of the lectures. You can print them. You can review and rewind as you wish. It will show you how to do things sitting in your living room or sitting in the streets with your friends. So it can make learning accessible, easier, and more interesting in ways that non-ICT approaches cannot do. So it enables learning for you. So it's very, very, very important. The only challenge for the North is, is for youths and students to have access to connectivity to the internet and to have devices to allow them to access these resources. And Khan Academy is only one example. There are so many that are available. The good news is most of the youths today have a telephone. So today you don't even need a computer or a laptop to learn. This device that we normally use for phone and sometimes spending idle times 
on Facebook, on Twitter, not Twitter, most youths don't use Twitter, you use what? Snapchat, right? Facebook, right? That energy can be turned into a classroom, a learning tool, a study group, a tutoring group. Simple things, just simple using of these devices. The youths in Adamawa and North East can begin to have biology study group, math study group, chemistry study group. You can have a WhatsApp group in that. You can have a Facebook. Instead of using these ICT tools and devices in idle ways, you can actually use it in very productive ways that can reinforce your learning and help you to improve your grades and your understanding. You're familiar with Watch Party on Facebook, right? I'm sure you guys use it, right? It's a tool on Facebook where you can go live. Like what we are doing, we could have captured it on Facebook and other students in Northeast can be commenting and be part of it. So you can, and this is an ICT device or a tool. And this device has services that it offers. So Facebook normally is just used for chat by the students, but you can turn it around and use these ICT tools. We are getting ready to take your WIAC or NECO. You have study groups on Facebook. On Monday, we will meet and do biology. On Tuesday, we will do physics. On Wednesday, we will do literature. On Thursday, we will do history. And our study groups online, you are in Jameta, he's in Yola, you are in Gombe, and you have others who are very good on biology. And they can come online through Facebook and explain things to each other. Your teacher can come in and join from his or her living room and listen to your discussions around each of the topics and guide you. So you can see that you can use ICT tools to learn and help each other. So that is a very simple example. The other thing is textbooks and materials are very expensive for the youths, for, pe for young people in the Northeast or in Adamawa. Some of the students have challenges to buy learning materials. Through ICTs, you can have access to open resources, textbooks that you don't have to pay anything in any of your subjects that you can go online, access them, and download them. And many, many, many more. Yeah, I'm optimistic. Yesterday, I was in Abuja. I attended uh, the president's launch of um, the national broadband strategy for 2020 to 2025 by the Honorable Minister of um, Communication and Digital Economy, uh, Minister Pantami. That is significant. Uh, he has taken the leadership to roll out broadband because for the Northeast youths and students to do these things and access the resources and benefits of ICTs to help them improve their learning, especially in science, technology, and mathematics, you need good connectivity. Not only good connectivity, but with rates and prices that are affordable. And from what I've heard, there are plans to roll it out to every state and make sure that the underserved and the unserved communities, including the North East, will be able to access broadband connectivity in a non-expensive way. When that happens and the youths are guided properly, it will be the beginning of the excitement and the interest of the youth to harness these very powerful uh, digital devices and resources to enhance their learning. 
Today you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to stop learning. You know how you go to class and at the end of the class you go home and you have to go back to school for studies. Learning now is everywhere and anywhere. And you can access everything you are learning at school, online, through ICTs. The only thing is you have to be motivated. You have to be, you have to want to. And I see no reason why um, the youths can't do that and benefit from what many other youths across the world are benefiting to improve their, their learning and making a learning exciting and valuable.